All right, in this video, we're gonna continue our discussion on thin layer chromatography by talking about the RF value. So here, you can see this plate, which is basically where we left off in the last video, where after completing your TLC experiment, you'll have a plate that looks like this, where you have this line where you spotted your samples, you have your results from visualizing the different compounds in your mixture after separation, and you have a line that measures how far the solvent traveled. Now, here we can make a qualitative description of the compounds in the mixture, the lower one being the more polar compound and the higher one being the less polar compound. But what the MCAT will also expect you to be able to do is a quantification of the separation. And this is achieved using what is called the RF value. The RF value has different names. Sometimes it's called the retention factor. Sometimes it's called the ratio to front value. But regardless, the RF value is something you should be able to recognize from MCAT. And its value you can calculate with this equation right here, which is gonna be the distance traveled by each compound in your mixture divided by the distance traveled by your solvent. So this is a good equation to keep in mind for the exam. And we can take a look at how it would apply to our sample TLC plate. So the different values we need, we need the distance traveled by the solvent, which would be this distance right here on our TLC plate. We also want the distance traveled by each compound in our sample. So this would be the distance traveled by compound one, and this can be the distance traveled by compound two. And here, since you have two compounds in your mixture, that means you're able to calculate an RF value for each component in your mixture. Another thing you can actually appreciate from what we can see here in the TLC plate is that the compounds will never move as far as the solvent. So as a result, when you're looking at the RF value, the RF value is always going to be between one and zero, meaning that you can never get an RF value less than zero, and you can also never get an RF value greater than one. Another thing we can take note about the RF value is again, the lower compound is more polar, the higher compound is less polar. This also tells us that the RF value is inversely proportional to polarity. More polar compounds have lower RF values, less polar compounds have higher RF values. And we can do a ranking of some of the more common functional groups that you can see in compounds to be able to recognize in general which ones would have larger versus smaller RF values. So if we're looking at the top, so compounds with high RF values, these would be compounds that are not very polar. So non-polar compounds. So you can be thinking about alkanes as well as aromatic compounds. So not very polar, very high RF values. So then you can look at compounds that are slightly more polar than alkanes and aromatics. So for instance, you can have haloalkanes so haloalkanes, they're slightly polar, but they're still largely hydrocarbons. So they will travel a good amount along the TLC plate, but not as far as your alkanes and aromatics. You can then continue to more polar compounds like carbonyls. So aldehydes as well as ketones, they'll have average RF values. Then you can also move on to alcohols. Alcohols can hydrogen bond. They have larger RF values. You can also look at amines, even greater RF values. And of course, molecules like carboxylic acids, which are excellent at forming hydrogen bonds. So you can see with these different functional groups we've included here, how the range works. You go from compounds that are virtually all nonpolar to compounds that are very polar that can form lots of hydrogen bonds. So that's how RF values work with thin layer chromatography.